In front of us, we have the top dawn Phoenix Plus, one of the diagnostic tools that is disrupting the industry with the fact that it has a massive 10.1 inch screen, a huge battery, 12,600, rugged design, and an easy to use software. Recently, I got it, I started to play around with it, and I admit I was biased. I was thinking that it will not be any good, but I have been surprised. Going from X tool to top down is exactly like going from Android to Apple. On the other one, you have thousands of things to set. You have thousands of software that are still in demo mode. On this one, it has a limited amount of things that you can change and it is performing exactly what it is its main purpose to perform. It is a diagnostic tool. It is a diagnostic tool that if you throw it in a workshop environment with people that are not really IT savvy, they will get along with it. It's not complicated. They don't have settings that they can mess about. They just take the dongle, connect it to the vehicle, and it is just working. Should they want to do something more complex? Should they need a wired connection? You have a cable, you connect it to the USB, you connect, connect it to the dongle, and it works without any additional settings. We are going to go through the menu of this Phoenix Plus and see if this helps you in your decision making if you want to get a unit like this one. Nowadays, the pricing for these types of devices is more affordable. This type of device should be less than 1,000 pounds, depending on where you're buying it. You can buy it from AliExpress at the 700, 800 mark. You can buy it from eBay at similar pricing. You might buy it from Amazon. Links will be in the description. Should you choose to buy one with our referral links, maybe we are going to get a small commission and we are able to keep the channel going. Back to the menu. We are looking at the new user interface from Top Don. They changed. They had a quite basic one in the past. Now, this is the new fancy stuff. You're able to see time on the left, battery on the right. You have just this drop screen to worry about. Nothing from, you don't have a navigator bar. If you go somewhere and you want to go back to the screen, you just swap to one of the sides. The same goes on the other part. Two quick shortcuts, Chrome and your settings, big scan button. This is one of the things that I've noticed. When you're interacting with the screen, you need to push a little bit more than on the smaller devices. Full vehicle coverage. I would say that if it has wheels and the steering wheel, these guys have it in their menu. Recently used BMW, Peugeot, Honda, and a Citroen, and divided on different brands. You can also scan with a camera of VIN and you can enter it manually. After that, uh, easier approach if the vehicle is newer auto scan and it will connect to the vehicle via the VCI try to get the VIN from your CAN bus network and after that select the software pack that it needs to scan that specific vehicle it is amazing what these devices are now capable of doing to be able to go from one platform to another and actually perform the diagnostics is quite amazing in my opinion and sometimes after working many years in the automotive industry, you will have manufacturers that are having problems in going from one generation to another. You're having now in front of you a device that is capable of going through different generations and from make to make and still perform the task. I'm quite impressed with these devices. The thing, I'm not postponing it anymore. The thing that everybody is searching for is that list of service function, service functions or special functions. This is that list. Although you have it in the menu, there is a small likelihood that it might not work on some vehicles, so be mindful of that. If that is the case, you can access the same type of function by having a more diagnostic approach to it. You go to the ECU that you know that is in charge of that function and you either find a special function in that menu or you use an actuator test that performs that action that you want. Let's take a quick look at the available options. Air to fuel ratio, brake, I would say EPB, brake resets, oil, oil resets, steering angle sensor, battery management systems, 
ABS bleeding, throttle body calibration, tire pressure monitoring systems, TPF related things, so regens, DPF, reinitializations. This is a dodgy thing, so you might tell the vehicle that it has a new DPF and still has the old one. I will discuss that at a different occasion. AC system something, initializations, add blue, headlights, airbags, clutch, calibrations, coolant, ECU coding, EGR, engine monitoring, FRM matching for the BMWs, the equivalent of the DPF, GPF, gasoline particle filter, the CAN gateway, something regarding the gears, automatic gearboxes after that, battery, high voltage batteries, immobilizer functions, advanced immobilizer functions where you need additional hardware. That is the list of everything that can be done with that one. I'm expecting it to work very similar to the high-end IM508 devices. Injector functions, cruise control, languages, you change the language of the vehicle, calibrations of sensors, NOx, again, emission related. Here is something interesting that you will see for the first time on this type of device. Mileage correction on the VAG vehicles with those instrument clusters, also trump key, Haima and Nissan have mileage correction functions available. Rain sensors, seats, start stop, sunroof operation, suspension, transport mode, something with matching the turbos, tires, I don't know that that is still a thing, and windows operation. Whew, that was a long one. ADAS, advanced driver assistance systems, if I remember correctly. If you want to calibrate something, that will be the menu for you. Additional hardware might be required. Module. Here is what additional hardware you can install. You can install a battery tester, an oscilloscope, and the thermal imaging cameras. Quite an easy way of updating the stuff. Just push one button, update, it automatically checks for the latest versions, and after that, you're able to download and it's install it on your tablet. Support. This was one of the interesting things that I found about Topton. So I bought the device and I received the email with a technical support contact that could help me if I would have any challenges while using this device. For those types of situations, you have additionally this part of the menu, which allows you to grant access to someone to actually work on your tablet if you have it connected to the internet. And that might be useful if you have a challenging vehicle because this system doesn't allow you access to the Android side of the things, they have included in this menu all of the additional apps that you might be using. So you have Chrome, you have YouTube, and you have links to technical libraries, technical data platforms like Autodata, Heinz, OBD, Wiki, and other stuff that you can use to take the information with you to the vehicle. So you can use it for wiring diagrams, servicing procedures and other stuff, making best use of the screen and making best use of a rugged device that you can take wherever you want next to the vehicle. History. Here is where we have a nice grouping of all the activities that have been done and the information is grouped based on the vehicle that you have worked on. We can see what has been done to this BMW. You have the reports and all the information is grouped nicely. Feedback. If something doesn't work as it should, you can use this menu, select the information that or the vehicle that gave you hassle, gave you problems, describe what didn't work and ask for the guys that are developing the software to take a look and see how they can perfect the software. Last thing for today, user info or the setting menu. We have details about the device, the VCI. We have a way of updating the system itself, sample streams, vehicle voltages, your profile, Wi-Fi available for the tablet, clear software, business information, customer management. Here is where they are implementing something quite interesting as a one device for all the workshop. So you have everything needed to manage the customers and manage also the vehicles. Interesting thing to have. You don't need to buy an additional software to, to have that. A way of storing the photos that you might be getting with the additional camera in the back should you want to document something regarding a repair or something that you're doing on a vehicle. Screen recorder and the last setting tab, a setting tab that is specific to the device itself. Minimum amount of changes can be done over here. And I've noticed that the tablet 
works quite well straight from the box. You can change the units, metric or imperial, the time zone. You can lock the screen. You can also select a different language. This is one of the other big selling points of uh, these devices. Now they have versions of the software available in multiple languages. And should you have a technician that is not really confident in using English, you can make his life a little bit better by giving him a diagnostic tool which is in a language that he understands much better. USB connection mode, this is one of the things that you also need to know about. If you want to transfer the information from the tablet to a computer, here is where you need to go. Click on device mode and after that you can connect your device to a computer using the USB-C port. And you have access to all of the files that are stored on this tablet. We also have the top drop down where we can select the brightness, the volume, open the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the screen recording, screen capture and flip the screen. This being said, that was the software of the Top Dawn Phoenix Plus. I hope you enjoyed it. You might also want to see this one over here. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.